Uh, I believe this is the first session of the community track uh, for Python Core. So I hope you are getting cozy, and yeah, you don't you can uh, enjoy your lunch and just hear me sharing on this topic. Okay, so um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Liu Yang. I'm a software engineer uh, at Zendesk. I'm based in Singapore. Uh, I love Python, and that's obviously the reason I'm here today. And I love open source. I am uh, actively contributing to open source uh, projects on GitHub. So currently, I'm maintaining uh, two popular uh, projects. Uh, one is called uh, KubiCutter Django, and the other is PyGitHub. Uh, I love cycling, and I love Taiwan. So I've been to Taiwan many times before. And this photo right here is actually uh, taken last year when I was cycling around the island. And if you can recognize this place, this is actually the southernmost point of Taiwan. So uh, you can find me on uh, social media, uh, GitHub or Twitter at SFDY. OK, let's get started. So we have a lot to cover today. Uh, so uh, let's jump, jump right to it. So first of all, uh, I want to just uh, talk about some of the basics. So what is a Python package, right? So a Python package is just a collection of Python modules, right? So once you wrote them, you can uh, just package and distribute uh, so people can reuse them and import into their applications. And if it's a public uh, package, you can obviously get it from PyPI or the Python package index. And for private package, you can use something like Artifactory or GitHub package. And if you don't want to use any of the service, you can always use git sub module to vendor uh, the package into your applications. OK, so I, I assume that most of us are familiar with PIP, uh, which stands for Python install package. So we know we can use PIP to install uh, one package by pip install followed by name of the package. Or if you want to install multiple packages at the same time, you can use a requirements file. So the format of the requirements file is like this. So it's one requirement per line and name of the requirement followed by some conditions. Right. So there are multiple ways you can uh, specify the versions using something called a version specifier. So you can use equal, equal, not equal, uh, less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And you can also chain multiple uh, conditions together, separated by a comma. And then PIP will try to find uh, the version that will satisfy all the specifiers for you. Right, so at this point, you may wonder what this talk is really about. So let me show you some of the common uh, issues with dependency management. So let me ask you a question. What do you think uh, the version will be installed for request if I were to run this command right now, pip install requests. Just think about it. Right? So the answer is it depends because the version that will be installed will be dependent on the latest version from PyPI at the time of executing this command. Right? So the result will be different from right now when I execute the command compared to when I run it like one week later or one year later, right? So that's uh, bad for our application because we want our applications to be uh, repeatable and deterministic, right? So the result is usually when there's any breaking changes introduced in the upstream library, it will break your continuous integration, your continuous deployment, or worst of all, it will break your application. So how do we deal with this problem? Well, the solution is pretty simple, just ping the version. And by ping the version, I mean to always specify the exact uh, version for your dependency. Now, even if you ping the version, you can still have another problem, which is version conflict. OK, so when I run this command, uh, Pete will, t will tell me there is an error that PyOpenSSL 19.1.0 has a requirement on cryptography greater than or equal to 2.8 but you will have cryptography 2.7, which is incompatible. So why would something like this happen? Well, the reason is because a dependency can also have its own dependency and can have its own dependency, et cetera. So for example, dependency A can depend on B and B can also depend on C and so on. 
So this is a tree-like structure. So it's a dependency tree. But what if C also depends on A? And that will cause a circular dependency. And PIP won't be able to uh, resolve the versions for you. OK, so now, yeah, and we have tools like uh, PIP Dev Tree to help you visualize uh, this tree structure. So you can install this by PIP install, uh, PIP Dev Tree, and it will show you uh, all the structures uh, of the current versions you have. So now we know the problems. Now how can we resolve the version conflicts? So let's look, look at the same example. So first option, you can bump uh, cryptography to something uh, larger than 2.8, because this is requiring uh, it to be two, uh, greater than or equal to 2.8. And the second option is you can downgrade Python OpenSSL uh, to loosen the constraint on cryptography. So for example, you can downgrade PyOpenSSL to maybe 18.1.0, which may only require cryptography greater than or equal to 2.7, right? So the last option uh, uh, may be a bit extreme, but if your application doesn't need uh, this library, you can just remove this, then you won't have a version conflict. Okay, next I wanna talk about uh, the behavior of different PIP versions. So uh, maybe we are always using the latest version of PIP and we don't know uh, the difference, but actually different PIP versions behave very differently. So for example, PIP 8 uh, doesn't support Python environment markers such as Python version, which we use to install a package uh, just for Python 2 or Python 3. And let's look at a very famous example of Oslo.utils uh, equals to 1.4.0. So this is a very famous example for version resolution. So if you install this using PIP 9, you won't be able to resolve the correct versions for you, and it won't show you any error message. But if you install using PIP 19, it will show you the error message. You have a version conflict here, but still it's not able to install the correct version. Yeah. So to resolve this problem, the PIP, the PIP team is working on a new uh, resolver that's native to PIP. So in May 2020 this year, uh, they released an alpha version for the resolver. So you can try it you, using dash dash unstable feature equals to resolver. And as you can see, uh, the new resolver is smart enough to, uh, to find the correct version for you. So if I go back, I can see this version uh, 5.0.0 does not satisfy this constraint. So the new version is smart enough to try an older version of 2.1.0, which is compatible with the version uh, PBR. And just a month, a few months uh, before, they released the beta version of the resolver in PIP 20.2. So you can try this using dash dash use feature 2020 resolver. And as you can see, uh, the beta version and the alpha version produce the same result. And the good news is that uh, just uh, in one month time, they will release a stable version in PIP 20.3. So that means uh, the new resolver is gonna be the default behavior. So you don't need to activate it by using any option here. So now we know the importance of painting the version, but how and where do you paint the version? So now I want to make a distinction between library versus application. So library is something that will be used uh, or imported from another application. It doesn't have a deployment on its own, but application will have a deployment on its own because uh, it will be different in terms of where to ping the version. So for library, you usually can find uh, the dependencies in these locations, such as setup.py, setup.cfg, or pyproject.taml. So for application, it's usually found in requirements file, such as main.txt, test.txt, or requirements.txt. Right. Um, so how do you pin a version, and which version should you pin it to? So let me show you this statement. So the rule of thumb is for requirements.txt, you should always uh, ping using the equal equal, while for libraries, 
in setup.py, you should always use uh, use everything but equal equal. Okay, now let's go back and take a look why uh, this statement makes sense. So on the left side is a setup.py example for a library. On the right side is a requirements.txt for an application. So both of them depends on MySQL Python, but they have different version specifiers. So let's assume that the application on the right side also uses the library on the left side, right? So uh, Pip is able to resolve a version that will satisfy both constraints, which is 1.2.5, because 1.2.5 also satisfies this version specifiers. But what if I change the left side to equal equal 1.2.4? Now, when you install this library from the application, you will also try to install all the dependencies specified from the install requires. So if you specify equal equal 1.2.4, you will have a version conflict. So that is why in the library or set up a pipe, you always just want to provide the minimum requirement for the library to work. So the library should be lenient uh, for the downstream applications to uh, resolve the version too. Okay, so another statement is that you should always ping the versions and use tools like dependent bolt to keep your dependencies up to date and secure. If you don't know what dependent bolt is, it's just a simple service that will scan your uh, requirements file. And then if there is a new version available from PyPI, it will create a pull request for you so you can triage the pull request and merge, merge it if you want. So that's all for today's talk. So just a quick recap, uh, you should always ping the version and for requirements.txt, always contain equal equal, while for setup.py, everything except for equal equal. And you should now use pip version uh, 20 plus to prepare for the new resolver that will be released next month. And you can use tools like dependable to keep your dependencies up to date and secure. And the last point I wanna make is that even though this, uh, this talk is specific to Python, the same principle should apply for all the other languages and their package manager as well. So that's it. Thank you for listening. Uh, do you have any questions? So thanks for the talk. Um, it's a very nice question. This question. So, same time as for Wendy. Hey, hi, hi, thank you for your talk. Uh, I would like to, uh, could you explain a bit more on the wrong result, resolving result of the uh, OSI over 2 one? Yeah, because I didn't follow. Sure. Uh, how well scoring okay. is there? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so, yeah, this slide. Um, so this uh, library, oslo.utils, specific this version, is kind of a bad version because it contains like, uh, so it depends on libraries that, ha that are mutually exclusive. So, so if, you try to, if you try to install this version uh, and using an older pip, you won't produce a, a working versions. So that's why you have to use a newer version of pip in order to get the correct versions. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Any more questions? So uh, my question is not specifically about the, the talk, but it's kind of related. So uh, in this slide, you mentioned that, oh, so I, I should introduce myself first. So in the talk description, you mentioned that PIP is going to have a bunch of work for the, I'm part of that team. So basically I made this with others. <laughs> And so what I'm 
front. So what we're trying to get feedback on is, so in this example, you're mentioning a, a case that PIP can resolve uh, Oslo.iatn to a, an earlier version to get a correct resolution of the dependency graph. But how, uh, there are cases where PIP just simply cannot have a correct dependency graph and needs to fail. And the new resolver is currently not doing very well there because, right, uh, because his, historically PIP just doesn't have that error at all. Now we're just trying to invent the error message for, for that case. So I'm wondering what, uh, how, how do you see the, uh, how do you see the, the error message is currently implemented and how we can improve from that? Sure. So I actually tried this new resolver myself uh, for our own company projects and it's able to find some of the uh, conflicts. So I think if uh, the new PIP resolver is unable to resolve, it will show you some error message and it will ask you to post the, the, the case to some forum or some, some, some place. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the case where you need to manually resolve the conflict, like using one of these options here. Right. Because that is a, that's a case by case situation. Right. Yeah, so, but I yeah. think most of the time, uh, the result, the new resolver performs pretty well. And even if you don't use the new resolver, you can also use, I think, pip check to help you produce the error message. So you can kind of, uh, yeah, find the error message earlier. So before you use the new resolver, you don't have any error message. Okay, yeah, thanks. It's very valuable. Uh, hello, uh, uh, I have a, a, a kind of stupid question is about why don't just pick integrate the resolver into its latest version, but we have to uh, type this argument to use this resolver. Uh, sorry, I could you could you repeat the question? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm wondering why pick uh, not just integrate that resolver in its latest version, but we have to use this parameter to have the correct uh, version of the dependency. Yeah, it's my question. Okay, sorry, I still didn't get the full question, but I think you're asking uh, why the PIP's new resolver is using like this option, right? Yeah, because the, the dependency is uh, have the error, uh, the PIP will find the error if it has the uh, wrong dependency. So. Why you just put it inside, but we have to use this resolver. Sorry, I didn't get the question. Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay, it's, it's clear. <laughs> okay, so uh, my question is, why don't Kip just integrate the resolver into its latest version? Uh, we have to use another resolver to, 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 yeah, oh. to have its, its correct dependency. Yeah, oh, before, okay. If, yeah. Uh, maybe I'm not making it clear. Uh, this resolver is actually inside PIP. It's not another resolver. But, but we have to specify that we have to use this resolver, right? So if, if the right, correct, right version is, uh, have to use this resolver, but why don't PIP just uh, integrate in and we, we don't need to use these arguments to use the resolver? Is there another consideration or some, some problem? Um, so I'm not very sure because I didn't implement uh, the new resolver, but I think the reason they use the option here for the alpha and beta version is that the resolver is still not very stable, right? So they only want to try out this in a small, uh, small cases, and then people can report feedbacks. So uh, once it becomes stable, then they will remove the, the need for options, and then it will become the default behavior, right? Because if it's unstable, it may produce wrong results if you are using the latest version of it. 
Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. I want to add one thing. So what you just had said is absolutely correct. Yeah. And I want to add one thing that might be like interesting, interesting to you is that people are currently actively depending on the wrong resolution results in Pip right now to to deploy their application. And if we just switch right now, it will break everyone. And yeah, so this is this is the second largest reason Pip doesn't switch right now is to give people some chance to fix it. Yep. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Uh, any more questions? Yes, that's all for that there's no more questions. Okay. okay. Yes, thanks so. for listening. Yeah, thanks for your sharing. So we'll keep cool. um thank you. Stop sharing and hope you enjoy the rest of the talk, the conference. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.